Welcome to Viewpoints with Ascendus Travel. I'm Jeff Bolig, and today we're going to talk about personal and professional development. And joining us is Rich Bracken. Rich, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Jeff. I appreciate it. I'm excited well, to be here. Well, thank you. Yeah. I, I read over your bio. You're a uh, business development director for a national law firm, yes. chair of the Kansas City uh, Legal Marketing Association. You're a TV guest. You're a blogger. Yes. Um, when do you have time to do anything else? Um, it's that 26th hour that I found that I that I'm, pat, I'm putting a patent on the 25th and 26th hour, and I'm going to sell it sometime. So be be on the lookout for that for that extra time. But uh, you know, I have a very big affection for coffee. Um, which I think gets me through a lot of the days. But I do, I wear a lot of hats, but I wouldn't have it any other way. Well, great. You know, how does one become a motivational speaker or talk on this subject? Because to me, it seemed it had to be A, part passion, and B, maybe part personal experience that puts you in that position. So so how do you get to this place? It is that 50-50 that split. And I, the one thing I keep telling people is that everybody has a story. Everybody's unique, and everybody has their own perspective on things. And most of the time, people will tell a little bit of the story. They'll tell the real nice pretty part of it, but they don't tell the hard work of it or they don't tell the darker part of it. And so a lot of my podcasting, my blogging that I do, and I talk with a lot of people that have achieved great things and we don't talk about the great things. You know, I've had a gold medalist uh, on there. I've had a billboard number one performing artist on there, but I don't talk about those accolades. I lead with them and introduce them. But then we talk about when did you want to quit? When did you want to give up? When did this not seem like a great idea? Let's talk about when you got through those things, because we can all identify with the struggle. We can all identify with those tougher times. And I think when people tell those stories, there's a bigger assimilation. I mean, it would be one thing for me to go in and say, yeah, I'm a gold medalist and it was easy. I walked in and showed up and there I was on the podium. But if you're telling all that struggle, you're telling all the hours, you're telling all the work that goes into it, especially in today's culture of overnight celebrity and overnight success, that's a better story. Well, and I know you can talk the talk, but you also have to walk the talk. And I know in your background, you've run a marathon before, yes. maybe a couple. But I think even more impressive, you lost more than 100 pounds. Yes. So, so, so tell me about your personal uh, success and how that's helped you and how you translate that to helping others. Sure, absolutely. You know, I think uh, that was that's kind of the headline story of my life as far as the motivational side goes. And and I was, I was a heavier kid. I went from a real thin kid to a heavier kid. Um, struggled mightily with depression and self-esteem because, you know, you know, first of all, middle school and high school are not fun for a lot of reasons, especially when it comes to self-identification and bullies and dealing with all those issues. And so I really had a negative view of myself and I hid behind my sports because at football, you're supposed to be big as a lineman. And so that was my excuse. Then when I got done playing football in college, I started keeping gaining, I, the, the weight kept coming on. and. I just, it, all the problems came to the forefront. And I just decided, I don't wanna be this way. I don't wanna live this way anymore. I wanna be happy and I don't wanna feel insecure or I don't wanna feel down about myself. So I, I decided to make the change. And I consciously said, I don't want this to be an overnight thing. I don't wanna take a pill. I don't wanna take energy drinks or, or you know, I think it was Slim Fast at the yeah, time. That's yeah. how it kind of dated yeah, a little bit. Yeah. But I had my diet analyzed and I went the right route. I took a year and a half to lose over a hundred pounds did the right diet things, did the right exercise things, and it's been 22 years now that I've kept it off. Wow, well, that, that's great. So that leads us probably to our first question of maintaining focus mm -hmm. on your goal and achieving it. Um, we have a lot of business people who watch this, mm -hmm. and um, they're traveling all the time. Uh, so they're achieving goals and they're searching to, to reach those goals. So, so how do you maintain focus and achieve a goal? Sure. So I think the, the biggest thing, again, kind of going back to instant success, a lot of people want to have success today and they want things done today and they want to achieve that status today. And so whenever I'm working with somebody, be it a, an attorney that I'm coaching or somebody that I'm consulting on the side, I want to make sure that they understand that they're in for the long haul. If you really, truly want to enjoy success and attain success, you need to look at it as a long play, not a short play. So lifestyle as opposed to like a fad or, or a short term? Correct, correct. Okay. And especially when you look at career goals too. So if you're thinking about your business goals, don't just think about what am I going to do in the next six months? You know, what am I, what, I need to have success in the next six months. Maybe something is going to take a little bit longer. So it's a balance of identifying the long-term goal of what you really want to achieve, but also identifying the short-term goals and making sure that you're hitting those along the way and celebrating them. I mean, people talk about, well, I want to be humble and I want to celebrate your short-term goals because I did that every time I hit a short-term goal in my weight loss or I, when I was training for my marathon, I ran the New York City Marathon, which was a huge goal. But I celebrated when I hit my goals in training 
And, you know, it's it's one thing to say, hey, you know, I ran the New York City Marathon, but I can also say, hey, look, you know, every month I logged this many miles because I put the dedication and time into it. Now, now it, it may seem to me, at least my perspective is in the social media era and the new technology, that that's harder because I could probably go on my iPhone and scroll down on my Twitter feed, and whether it's weight loss, getting faster, running, you know, being stronger, I can scroll down and fi- find five or ten things in one scroll mm-hmm. that would help me, and they're all kind of divergent. So how do you filter out the, the noise and stay focused on that? Sure. You know, I think uh, what I will say is I think there have been some very advantageous business people that have looked at the, the pain points of society. You know, we're one of the most obese countries in the world, so why not come up with a really good product to help people lose weight quickly? You're blending the desire to want to be healthy and the, the desire to do it now. Um, you, you can look at, you know, there's 50 million different people that are going to consult you on how to make your business better, how you're going to grow leads overnight, how you're going to have 100,000 followers next month. And really, the way I, fi- I filter through all of that is I think about the old school approach. You know, a lot of things that are done are done the right way. They're done with sweat equity and they're done with time and patience. And so I, I ignore all those because to me, I mean, yes, I applaud them for trying to find a business route, but at the same time, the old school method has tried and true for thousands of years, and that's not going to change no matter what you're trying to accomplish. What, what have you found are the big, biggest obstacles, obstacles to goal achievement? I'm sure some of it's inside, but mm-hmm. there, there may be external. So talk about obstacles and how you overcome them. Sure. You know, the, the internal thing is exactly the number one thing I talk about. If you're not in whatever goal you're trying to achieve for the right reasons, and that's number one for you, for your own personal achievement. So if you're pursuing a goal, like if I'm trying to do something to make my parents happy, that's not going to bring me the, the optimum joy that I want to do. Or if I'm going to achieve this because it, I think it's going to get the approval of my boss that's not going to bring me the joy that I, I truly need. I need to find a reason that I want to accomplish it and that it's going to make me happy because, you know, I could go and sell through the roof. And if my boss comes back and says, great, okay, now your, your goal's gone up and I'm basing my happiness off of their response, I'm not going to be satisfied with what I did. And I may have just killed myself over the last year to hit that goal and I'm not getting the praise that I want or the, uh, the acceptance that I want. Mm-hmm. So really finding that true inner reason and that core value and start that way. Don't start with, the, with trying to do it for somebody else. Do it for you and you'll find that joy throughout and especially when you accomplish that goal. Okay. I, I would assume the role of others in goal achievement is kind of double-edged sword. It, it can help you. You can get the support, mm-hmm. but they can also be the obstacle. So how do you uh, deal with the role of what others play in goal achievement and making sure they're not keeping you from doing it but, but helping you achieve? Sure. You know, I th- one, I think you are, you're the product of who you surround yourself with. And so when you think about positive influence, everybody wants to see other, other people achieve if they've got a good intention. And so there are going to be people that are going to have their own individual jealousies now. And those are the people that are going to either, you know, try to try to talk behind your back or try to, you know, it, hinder your goal or hinder your progress or do something to derail what you're trying to accomplish because truly they're not satisfied with who they are and what they're doing. So rather than put in the effort, which if they actually put in the effort to improve themselves that they do to derail you, they would probably be on the same par and in a positive frame of mind. So those people that tend to err towards the, or go towards the negative route or the, um, the, you know, the salt in the water or the poison in the water of a company because they don't want to work harder. They want to bring people down so they don't have to feel as bad about their progress. Those are the ones that you have to tune out because they're in their own issue and they're in their own problem. And if you let them get to you, it will derail every bit of positivity and every, every, every bit of progress and momentum that you possibly can get. Makes, makes sense. So we've talked a little bit about the what mm-hmm. and, and the why, but the how is sometimes the toughest part. So right. give us some tips on how you've uh, achieved some of your goals or, or made progress. What what are the what are the hows? Right. I you know that when you think about the hows of accomplishing anything, there is nothing wrong with asking questions. There's nothing wrong with asking you know find seeking out a source or a mentor or an expert in, in an area or somebody that knows something that you don't that's going to help you achieve those things. So. I take, you know, take the marathon, for example. I'm, you know, I like to run. It helped me lose my weight, and I became a runner, which you know, I used to if you, you would have to get a bullwhip and a bullhorn behind me to get me to run. 
Now I, I've become somebody who enjoys running, but I didn't know the first thing about how to truly train for a marathon and how to get ready for one. And it's the only one I've ever run. And I'm, I, I've told myself before I was only going to probably do one, which I'm sticking to <laughs> you that. You are smart. <laughs> right. But I sought out people that were that I knew were runners that ran marathons. And I asked them, okay, what kind of shoes do I need? How do I need to train? What's the right and the wrong way to train? Do I need to, How do I need to prepare day of or day before? And I got those answers rather than trying to go out and say, well, maybe I'll figure it out or I'm too nervous to ask questions or I don't want to look dumb. You know, nobody wants to look dumb so they don't ask questions. But it's seeking out those experts, whether it's professional, personal, weight loss, exercise, whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish, the how you can learn from other people's experience. And that is where I think I've seen the most, the, the, the quickest improvement for me and the quickest route to success is just asking people for help and asking people for their input. Great. Um, we are a travel mm -hmm. agency, so I would have to talk a little bit about travel. But right. in, in the sense of, of, of the vacation or the personal travel, to me, that seems a great opportunity to unwind and unplug. So whether it's travel, going to a sporting event or whatever, how important is that unplugging or unwinding uh, for a person's success? I think as we sit here today and, and whoever watches this moving forward, there's never been a more important time to unplug. We are so overly connected in our society, especially if you are a working professional. So if you're a somebody who has got a family and you've got a job and you're traveling and you're doing all these things and you're always connected and people can always get to you through your phone or through your email, you're always available and you're always on. And we're not wired that way. We're not wired to take on that kind of pressure. So you have to unplug. And we've seen, especially in the legal world where I work primarily, is that there's been an uptick in the, the honest uncovering of mental problems, of overstress, anxiety, depression, those kinds of things, you know, substance abuse, because people don't unplug. And I think that's across all industries. I think everybody needs that, whether you are a working professional or not, you need that time to unplug. You know, do meditation. I incorporated meditation. Matter of fact, I talked to one of my meditation instructors right before I got here, and we talked about the value of just starting with five minutes. Take five minutes in the morning and five minutes at evening if, you're, if you've never done it before and just sit still. If you can't find 10 minutes in your day, I, I can't, you can do it a daily audit. You can find 10 minutes. 10 minutes either don't go to the drive through at coffee or get off social media for 10 minutes a day. You can find 10 minutes to meditate, but it's so, so critical. Well, and I, I can see where you can unplug a little easier on the beach or maybe uh, um, you know on a cabana or whatever. But when you're on the road traveling for business, what, what kind of advice do you have for people who are, you know, you're rushing through the airport, you're trying to get home, you're turning the rental car, um, you know, hopefully Ascend Us Travel or any other agency is right. helping. Right. But what do you do for yourself to help you uh, deal with that? Sure. And, and until Ascend, Ascend Us puts in this, uh, what we'll call a meditation buffer time and the travel plans, you know, time, what I, I don't like time management because manage, time's going to move whether you like it or not. So it's, it's allotting the time and blocking the time to do things that you need. And I think, especially when you travel for business, you know, I, th I think about the times I travel and I travel quite frequently where I know that, okay, I've got to go to this place. I've got to catch this plane. I've got to be on this, you know, on this cab, you get in the cab and get to the hotel. Then I've got meetings and I've got this and I've got this and I've got this. And you think about those core times, but you don't think about the 20 minutes that you have in between. So if you can turn on a meditation app in, the, in your Uber, in your car on the way to the, the hotel, or if you can read a book or do something different on the plane, take that time. Take that time to, to kind of break away from what's going on and recharge. You know, it, I think the, the quote that I saw the other day is that if we found as much joy in recharging ourselves as we do our phones, that we would be a much better society. <laughs> Makes a lot of sense. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, so as, as we close up, Rich, if you were to leave people with maybe two or three thoughts that they could take away, you've provided a lot of great information, and I'm sure people can go back and watch it over and over again. But if, if those two or three key ta takeaways for someone to be successful, what, what would you say they are? You know, I think the, the one thing is – really finding the core of your own happiness. And this this transfers to your job, your life, your relationships, your friendships, whatever is going on in your life. Find the core value of happiness in everything that you do because there's always going to be a frustration. There's always going to be something that's out of balance. And so if you can find those core happiness factors within everything that's in your life, you can always go back to those. So you know, I, I would love to meet the person that says, I've been happy with my job every minute of every day of every year of my life because they would be the biggest liar in the entire world. But if you can find that core competency, that core happiness within your position, whenever something goes out of flux, go back to that core, find your why, 
Find why am I doing what I'm doing for work? Why am I in this relationship? Why do I have these friends? Find that core in internal reason for you to have that happiness. Because again, life's going to shift you no matter what. Your work is going to shift you. Everything is going to shift. If you can find that balance, you can find that foundation, you can go back to it. Um, and two, I think don't, have, don't be afraid to grow. I think so many times we're so afraid to admit our shortcomings or admit that we don't know something or admit that you know, we, we could be better at something. And I think once we strip that away, professionally and, and personally, I think we become a much more um, satisfied, much happier workforce, much happier society, because there are so many things that we are afraid of in that instance. So if I strip away that, that insecurity and say, look, I want to know more at my job. I want to know more about other things outside of just what I do so I can make myself more valuable at my at my position. Don't be afraid to say that you don't know those things. So kind of that concept, if you're comfortable, get uncomfortable. Exactly. Yeah. Uncomfortable is, is, yeah. is the best place you can be. And if you feel like you are completely complacent and comfortable, find a challenge. Right. Find something to, to get off that comfort level because that's where you plateau. Great, great. Well, Rich, great information. Where can people find more of your, your tips and your techniques? Are you online? Your, your blog? Tell us where we can find you. Yes, you can find everything at richbracken.com. I've got everything from blogs to podcasts to videos. Um, I even have a, a Spotify link that you can go and find all my, my playlists because I used to be a DJ back in, back in a former <laughs> life awesome. of all the hats that I wore, and I had to <laughs> awesome. finally take that one off. Awesome. Great. Um, but, if, yeah, hey, if you need a meditation playlist on your next flight, go to, go to richbracken.com. You can find my Spotify, but everything is on Rich bracken.com well that, that's great rich i really appreciate you joining us today absolutely thank we, you for we've got it well that's super we have a great audience uh, who likes to learn how to improve themselves and this will be great information for them i appreciate it it was a great time and, and i look forward to, to seeing you again sometime great great that's been viewpoints with ascendus travel we'll talk to you soon